Good morning, everyone. This is Sharon Cummings with Keller Williams Realty in Allen, Texas, and we are here for Wisdom Wednesday. And this week, we are featuring Daniel Cook with Cook DFW Roofing and Restoration. Hey, Daniel, how are you this morning? Oh, good morning. How's it going? Good, good. So we wanted to chat. Last week, we talked with Dean Hansen with Farmers Insurance, who I know you also know and do work with um, in partnership a lot. And so I wanted to get a roofer on here to discuss, you know, we are in that season, which I think is 24 seven, 365 days a year now to where we might see some hail or some wind damage. Seems like lately, the, the more time goes on, we get more throughout the year than we used to. But, um, you know, I know this past week, we've had a lot of uh, wind and hail situations going on. And I just wanted to talk with you about what is the best course of action, what kind of tips can you give people who may see this uh, for what they need to do if they think or suspect that they've had damage? Well, it's really important. And, and when we work with our uh, preferred insurance contractors, they generally want us to go out first mm -hmm. and really do a, an overview on the roof and the property itself to see if it's going to deem an insurance claim should be called in. Because if clients just immediately call the insurance company it, it, it becomes an inquiry and then that becomes a claim generally. And if some insurance claims do not get processed or don't go through, then that still shows to be a claim on your file. Right. And, you know, if you do that every year, because every year we get storms, you know, yeah. after three or four years, you know, you may still not have enough damage that's going to qualify for your claim. That's going to be over your deductible. Mm -hmm. uh, you may need some repairs. You might need some small touch-ups. And, you know, it's a couple hundred dollars here or maybe 500 bucks here, but it's, it's definitely not going to be above your deductible. And so we try to, you know, be that middle person that's going to go out and help the client understand how much damage they have. And then if they do qualify, then we can alert the insurance company with them and start the claim properly. So um, tell me a little bit about that. So say somebody does have damage and it was more, you deemed it that it would be more than their deductible. That's how you would decide to call the insurance company, right? So if it's a small, a small something, you would just say, hey, you know, this isn't worth filing. This is a $300 fix, you know, or $500 fix or whatever. Your deductible's four grand or five grand or whatever it is. How about if we just fix this and then you don't have to file a claim? Um, but then if it is something that say it is major damage, they need to file a claim. So kind of what is that process look like once you determine that? So if we've deemed that the claim does need to be called in and final and started, then what we would do is, um, you know, address, you know, obviously you have the storm event because usually it's right after the event. So that mm -hmm. when you call in a claim, they ask, you, you know, what kind of damage do you have? Um, we just let the client know what damage they have. And so if they have roof damage, they have gutter damage, they have window screens or windows, you know, whatever we see, we tell the customer, they tell the insurance at that time what they have damage wise. Um, if they have any active leaks, we have to prevent that from happening more inside the home. As part of your responsibility as, an, as a carrier or as a policyholder, you need to stop more damage from occurring to the property. Mm -hmm. So we will make sure that all active, active leaks have been stopped, uh, preventive tarping, anything like that. Um, and then once that all information is in the system, uh, then they will get a callback from a, an adjuster on a time that someone's going to come out and look at the property with them. And then we generally want to be on site because uh, a lot of times our customers are not able to meet with the, with the adjusters. Right. And as long as they're okay with us meeting on their behalf, then we'll meet with the adjuster. We'll go over the property with them and, uh, you know, just stand there and make sure the uh, adjuster sees everything that they need to see. Okay, good, good. So I know I saw on social media during the last storm that we had that you guys were out tarping clients' homes and, uh, you know, people that said, hey, my roofer can't get to it and they have an active leak. It's raining. They're leaking, you know, and I thought that was great. I mean, within just a couple hours, I saw posts that you guys were out tarping and and taking care of people. So that's that's wonderful. And that's that's what makes me want to be in partnership with a roofer or an insurance agent or something like that. It's when you see them actively helping people in the moment, you know, it's not like, oh, wait till Monday at 9 a.m. to give me a call. Like it just happened and we're there. So, right. uh, so kudos to you on that. That was awesome. Well, thank um, you. It's a, it's a team effort though. Our team is very, uh, 
we're very fortunate to have the team members that we have with us because they all have a caring heart and that's, that's hard to awesome. find. That's it hard is. To find, so. How many, how many people are in your team? Uh, we have five project managers. Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. And then um, there was another question I was going to ask you about um, the, so how, if somebody is like in a neighborhood and, and they don't, they don't feel like they have any damage but there's roofing signs literally all around them and their neighbors are all getting new roofs. I mean, do you think, I mean, obviously, right? It's smart for them to have their roof checked. Some people are just scared to get their roof checked. I think they're just like, oh, I don't, we don't have any leaks. I'm not going to get it checked because I don't want to have to get a new roof. What mm -hmm. do you have to say about that? I mean, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like men and going to the doctor, right? <laughs> Nobody likes to go to the doctor. You don't want to have your physical checked up every year. And yeah. so you wait till you have a heart attack. And unfortunately, you know, that's yeah. a bad problem to have. So, you know, maintaining your home is not fun. No. We all know that. <laughs> uh, I mean, maintaining a home is a challenge and, it, and, it's, and it's time Work. consuming. But yeah. if you don't do it and you and you wait until something catastrophic happens, it's going to be much worse. Because Absolutely. We always get on these roofs and it's usually people that say, I don't like soliciting. I don't, you know, yes. I don't go out and listen to people. Um, you know, if I have a problem, then I, I take care of it. You know, every time we yeah. get on a roof like that, the roof is demolished. The mm -hmm. roof has been needing a roof for four or five years. And now they got a leak because they didn't take care of the maintenance on the roof. And so now it's, it's a pass due situation. Now they have to have a roof replacement. Right. And they could have maybe avoided that if they would have just had it checked and gotten something taken care of when it happened. You know, I, I hear that a lot. I've, you know, I deal with a lot of home sellers and I'll go in to meet with them and they'll say, oh, well, the roof's only eight years old. And I'm like, well, we've had a lot of things happen in eight years here in the DFW area. So we might ought to get that check just before we go active. Because here's the other thing. You're selling your house. It's going to come out <laughs> if there is something wrong. So there's no pain in getting it checked. Like, let's get it checked out. And if it is something wrong, wouldn't you rather deal with that now? Or would you rather wait and have the buyer tell us how they want us to deal with it? Like, let's get it taken care of. Let's pick the roofer. If the buyer's the one that finds it, a lot of times they want to pick the roofer. They want to pick the color. They want to deal with how, what kind of shingles it is, what, you know, all of those things. And then the paperwork, if you've already done it and dealt with it, it just makes it a lot smoother in the process. So, you know, don't be scared to get the roof checked. Um, so do you guys do just like free roof inspections or do you charge people to go out and just take a look at their roof or how does that work? No, it's a simple process. That's why I don't understand more people, more people need to take advantage of it. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know many roofs that you would not just get on and do a visual inspection. You're, yeah. you're really checking for large items. We're checking for the accessories to be, you know, properly booted, uh, not missing anything. We're not seeing any loose shingles, uh, valleys, you know, there's no penetrations that are open. Around the chimney. That's a yeah, big spot. Flashing. I feel like all the time, chimney flashing. Yep, flashing <laughs> Almost every common. inspection. <laughs> well, this is the thing too, people don't understand. I mean, the sealants that you use will wear out. And the yeah, sealant is what starts the leak. serious leaks. heat here too. Yes. So things melt and they deteriorate. So it's smart to just have them checked up. And like you said, minor things you can do to extend the life of your roof and keep yourself from having to get a new roof every year <laughs> or, you know, every, yeah. every time you have it checked. But, um, and, and sometimes there are times when you will need more than one new roof in a couple of years, you know, if we have pretty major uh, damage here. So, well, yeah. let us know how, what is the best way to reach out to you, Daniel? If somebody wants to talk to you, I, obviously you can reach out to me. I know Daniel, I can connect you. Uh, but if somebody just wants to reach directly out to you and have them have their roof checked out, Tell us how to do that. So, I mean, the quickest, fastest way is just uh, go on our website, cookdfw.com. There's a contact me tab right there. That goes straight to my cell phone. So I get okay. those messages within a second of them, you know, putting that information in. Uh, awesome. My cell phone is, is it's public knowledge, 214-236-2832. And then our emails are all simple. It's just daniel at cookdfw.com. Okay, perfect. Well, I appreciate you so much for taking the time this morning to get on and just chat with me about this. This is very important for people. And I think it's one of those things that kind of gets put on the back burner a lot. So maybe we brought a little bit of wisdom and knowledge to people for their roofing needs and 
if anybody uh, needs a reference, I know lots of people that have worked with Daniel and I'll be happy to, to send you those as well. So hope you have a good day and get up on lots of roofs and, uh, and thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate right. you letting me come we'll on. We'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.